for the hedgerows in the middle of the distance, instead of the far distance, I'm going to use the foliage brush, wet the brush, squeeze the water out of the brush, tap the brush so it opens up, and we're going to use a darker green, some hooker's green, maybe a touch of yellow ochre, so hooker's green, a little bit of blue, and a piece of paper. I'm going to use the piece of paper as a mask, and you stipple along the edge of the paper. So we have a hedgerow, a tree or a bush, like that. Move it down, a little bit darker. So you stipple the shape of the trees, so you get a dark colour first, it's just put that hedgerow in there, then along the edge of the cornfield, just change the angle slightly, and the tree there. With a lighter colour, this is pale olive green, some white, just put a little bit of highlight onto the, the trees there. So that's a very simple way of extending a painting far off into the distance. Next we're going to move up in the world, we're going to paint some mountains. I'm going to show you two different ways of painting mountains. One is with a, a conventional round number 12 brush and the other one is with a palette knife. So we're going to start with the brush. So. Ultramarine and burnt umber, so have a nice grey colour, a bluey grey colour, touch of white. So we'll have a mountain here. So you paint the shape of the mountain first, and we're going to put the snow on top of the mountain. Like that. Some raw sienna, touch of white, just make it a bit lighter. So there's one peak, then with a slightly stronger, darker mix, ultramarine burnt umber, and that sits in front of the first mountain, a touch more blue. So this one slightly lighter sits back in the painting and then we let this dry off before we put the snow on top. Some white, touch of blue, and that just sits on the top of the mountain there. Drag that down. Then with some cobalt blue for the shady part of the mountain. And that goes in there. Just going to make that just a, a little bit darker because it's becoming the same colour as the uh, as the, the sky. Wash the brush out. Squeeze the water out of the brush. Then with white and paint that onto 
mountain top. Drag that down. Again, some blue. And there we have a simple mountain painted with a round brush. The second mountain I'm going to do is with a palette knife and I'm going to use this very old palette knife. Start with the smaller mountain first, so some white. Mix the colour onto the palette. Some ultramarine and some burnt umber. So it's a, a greyish colour, just make that just a bit darker. So straight onto the, uh, the background sky. More ultramarine. So the darker mix. Pour it like that. Now you can see that lots of texture and different shapes appearing. Put a bit of white with some raw sienna. For the next peak we use a slightly stronger darker mix, so ultramarine burnt umber. Just a bit taller. Some white with some raw sienna. Just bring that down. And for the snow, we put that straight on top of the, the first colours. So wipe any paint off of the painting knife. Use some white with a little bit of cobalt blue. To there. And just Put that onto the first mountain. And some cobalt blue onto the shady part. For the main mountain in the foreground, some white straight from the tube, plenty of colour on the, uh, on the knife and just sit that on top of the dark background. Some blue, cobalt blue. more white. And some blue. So there we have 
a much more dramatic mountain range, plenty of texture, really looks quite, quite rugged. Once the painting has just about finished, to, the finishing touch really is to sort out something in the foreground. We've got the main subject in, in the centre, that, that's looking good, but as it comes down to the bottom of the painting, we just need to, to finish this off. And this, I'm just going to show you a very, very simple way of adding a little bit of detail without too much effort. So we're going to use the fan stippler, some burnt umber, and with that dark colour, just going to paint in some ferns by just flicking like that. Flick up for a dark colour, bring that down to the, uh, the footpath, and some ferns on the, on the other side here. So just hold the brush upright at a slight angle and just slide it sideways. Just darken that a little bit into the foreground. And then with the half rigger, same colour, burnt umber, you're just going to paint some fine grasses and you hold the brush upright so the paint flows through the brush so it's not too thick and you just paint in some grasses in amongst those ferns. So it just adds a little bit of detail in the foreground. And the other thing is, if you have the grasses leaning towards the centre, it draws the eye into the, uh, the centre of the painting. So they lean in, across to the right, and the same here. So upright, and just bring it in just a little bit. And that helps to feed the eye into the painting. This is another example of um, how to paint foregrounds. This time we have uh, an old cart in the, uh, in the foreground, but just to help blend the whole thing in, we just use a, a light colour. This is with the half rigger, a light colour, which is pale olive green and some white, not too thick, and you paint the grasses over the dark and that just pushes that cart back into the painting. Again, feed the, the grasses in so that it leans towards the centre of the painting. effort at all. Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended version of today's workshop and the book that accompanies this series are now available to order from the Painting and Drawing Channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.